everyone. Welcome to a turbocharged edition of ARG Presents. I'm Amigo Aaron. Joined by a man, not to be confused with this game, Poppin' Magic, Poppin' Fresh Brent. It's the Brent. It is me. And I, I, Poppin' Fresh, I wish. By the way, we are the original Turbo Duo. We when are? You get that in there, that's right. <laughs> I so, thought we might be Poppin' Magic. So you can see here, we're at the, the base. Beautiful Mount Fiji in Japan. Brent, yes. what do you, what do you, look at the splendor and glory here. What do you think? I'm thinking, man, I'd be cold if I was here right That's now. That's right. This is where it all began, the birthplace of the TurboGrafx slash PC Engine. And that's what we'll be covering today on this episode of ARG Presents. We spun the wheel, we made the deal last week, and we will be taking a look at the system and games on the TurboGrafx CD slash PC Engine CD slash Turbo Duo <laughs> yeah. slash Super CD. <laughs> These guys... I mean, granted, they, this predates the Sega CD, but they looked at what Sega did and said, screw you, we can take that to a whole new level of extreme. And they did. They did it way before Sega did it. Although Sega did end up one-upping them by, by chaining 13 consoles together. Well, much like Sega, they both went in a tank. Yeah. CDs didn't help. So, uh, Bro, what do you know? What have your experiences with a uh, Turbo Graphics or PC Engine CD? And... and Henceforth, I'm just going to call this PC Engine CD because it's easy to say. Sure. Have you ever seen one of these in the flesh? Absolutely not. And, no. I, uh, I, I've actually played a Turbo Graphics. Yeah. yeah um, I'd hope there's 16, one right there. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I've played it other places. Uh, but I've never seen or played the uh, CD attachment. None at all. Did you know anyone growing up that had it? Because, I mean, clearly I bought this one much, much Way later. later. Yeah. yeah. Just I probably had it for about 10 years. Do you remember anyone that had a Turbo Graphics at all? Nope. No one literally, No one had that one. Nope. Nope. And you guys had Saturns and stuff. So I mean that. Oh yeah, you we knew had... about the obscure, more obscure stuff in the stage, and you still had it. Right. Uh, well, the Turbo Graphics wasn't terribly popular over I think, here in the I don't states. think people realize how um, rare some of these more popular consoles are. And I'll give you. And Turbo Graphics is a, is a perfect example. Very few of these sold in the states. And, yeah. And 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 it, way fewer. Uh, CD unit sold. Now, yeah. I've never personally have I ever seen one in the flesh. I don't think I have. I have seen a PC Engine in the flesh, but it, and I've seen a Turbo Duo in the flesh, but I've never seen a, P, a Turbo Graphics 16 with a CD attachment. Right. Uh, and um, again, and the Sega Saturn, which sold more than Turbo Graphics, same thing. There weren't a ton of these things out there. Same thing with the 3DO. I mean, people well, bought I mean, them, but I mean, everyone I knew had Super Nintendos or Genesis's or just used. Computers. Not like you everywhere you went there was a 3do or a right or a CDI yeah only saturn was a, a lot more common or, yeah it was the most common of the bunch you know i'd say saturn was I'd say it was more common over here than the 3do oh yeah you think yeah, oh yeah tremendously more okay yeah. well there you go so i had to learn uh, uh what the heck was going on with this thing yeah. so I, I did a little a uh, little studious here i got the uh, the uh gambletron here since i cunningly didn't get to print out my stuff so i'll be Blindly looking at this, and people have commented on how blind I am, and they're right. Uh, I need to get bifocals, but I'm, I'm scarred. I'm too scarred to go get bifocals. I'm afraid it'll jack up my stride, man. So uh, let's. That's right, my stride. So let's talk about. We're going to start off by just talking about the actual CD-ROM edition, okay? So the PC Engine had a release of the CD-ROM in December fourth in Japan of uh, 1988. Which is super early. Yeah, it was actually it was it was it, it it was real super early when it came out. The way this thing works, if you if you're familiar with the Turbo Graphics 16, uh, it's got if I can pull one out here, it runs on these two cards. Uh, these are a little, uh, they're sort of like um, uh, what you would find on the uh, uh, Master System. You have they they, they yeah. have, it's similar. This is obviously hold more more advanced, uh, but these were little little cards. They're great. They were very uh, they're very sturdy uh, little cards, and they slip into the union. So how would you CD? Well, what you had to do was you had a card that went in that effectively told it, hey, dummy, boot off the CD, and it did, and it did. Um, so uh, the original uh, CD was released in America for the Turbo Graphics in November of 89. So yeah. that's, a, that's, a, 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 that's a, about a, a little less than a year. Yeah, that's pretty here. close for us. And I'm guessing they were probably trying to uh, 
filled up a supply of games for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, and they, of course, it was, it, since the PC Engine is a lot different than Turbo Graphics, they had to basically re-engineer the structure of it. The PC Engine, a nice, compact felt unit. Turbo Graphics uh, is a goofy-looking uh, unit with a stupid connector. I, I, I don't like it as much. I'm, I'm, I much prefer the PC Engine, the look and the, well, and the functionality. Yeah. They both have many shortcomings as we went over in the past. Absolutely. Not the least of which being they only have one joystick port yes. in, on the Turbo Graphics, it, it, which is ridiculous. Yes. Um, so <clears throat> they had then they released in Japan because they were like, well, we got a CD player, but we can do better. It was super system uh, card time. That was an upgrade for the for the CD-ROM squared system that came out on October twenty six ninety one, and that was a BIOS update. It also had more RAM. All right, yes. now they also released that in the states. This is what blows my mind because I've never heard of any of this. I've never seen this in the states ever yeah, ever in a million either. years. Um, the American version of the Super System card uh, it was exclusively sold as mail order. <laughs> But then again, think about it. There were so few people here that had the first one. So who's <laughs> going to bother upgrading? I can understand that. There's no reason to bother with that stuff. Um, so they weren't done yet. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, they were. So here's how I had to get a little chart to tell me what the heck was going on. Okay. Okay. If you've got CD-ROM squared, that, 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 those CD-ROMs, those will run. Those are standard CD-ROM games. They'll run on all CD-ROM squares. Okay. Then they release super CD-ROM yes. squares. Okay. That required a super system card to work on the original CD-ROM squared. Okay. So you had to have that new card, the mail order card. Yes. Okay. You got that now. Um, arcade CD-ROM squared. Yeah. Okay. Now. That was something else they released. I don't think that actually got released in the States. I, I couldn't, and it required, my research, I didn't it think required so. an American card pro on the CD-ROM CD -ROM squared. By the way, in Japan, this is called the CD-ROM-ROM. -ROM. That's why they've got the squared thing. <laughs> it's a CD that always amuses me. And now, I should, I'm should i not done yet. Uh, if you have the CD, Super CD-ROM or the... Uh, if you have the Super CD-ROM, you can play that on what are called the CD Duo systems, which we'll get to in a minute. If you had the, if you had a game that required the arcade CD-ROM, you had to have a card to go on your Super Duo. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about. I want to talk about the uh, the Turbo Duo. It's this. Hey, <laughs> this thing was called the Turbo Duo, the Super CD-ROM, the PC Engine Duo, the Turbo Graphics uh, uh, CD Duo. It had a, it, this thing was all over the map. So this thing, this was a standalone system. This wasn't an add-on. Right. Okay. Uh, this thing came out in Japan September twenty-first of ninety-one, and in the states it came out October tenth of ninety-two. And yes, this also got a release in the states. I've seen one of these one time at a con, and I never saw I never saw it again. So <laughs> I don't I don't know what the heck was going on there. Um, this thing introduced at a price of three hundred bucks in the U.S. Which in today's wide, you're looking at right around five hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, a pretty good, pretty good chunk of change. Although not horrible. No, not not no, not bad. Uh, this thing was in production from ninety one to ninety five, so not a huge. Wow, I, that's farther than I thought. Right, 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 right. So <clears throat> now, so again, this thing released in the states at two ninety nine. There were two hundred and seventy games released for it. I don't know. I don't think that's in the States. I think that's overall. Yeah, I think that's overall. Because there were quite a few titles in Japan, and this thing actually did pretty well in Japan. It did. It did. Uh, which is funny. Uh, so, the, uh, the, 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 when, they, when they released the Turbo Duo, they were like, okay, we got a bunch of these uh, Turbo Graphics CD machines, or add-ons, what we do with those. Well, they dropped the price of the CD add-on to 150 bones, 150 bucks. Not too bad. If you wanted to go that route. Then you also had to buy the Super System card. They're not giving you those. Nope. <laughs> that's going to set you back 65 bucks right there. Um, so, the uh, the long story short is this thing bombed over here. It didn't it didn't do anything. But in Japan, it went crazy. It helped the, C, the PC Engine outsell the NES for a while until a Super Nintendo came out and then stomped a mud hole in them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you have to remember... Uh, when the Wii U came out, Nintendo's yeah. biggest 
claim that the reason why it failed was because of uh, uh, name confusion. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to keep track of all the Turbo Graphics stuff? Well, and when yeah. name confusion from Wii to Wii U messes I'll, up your part your sales. I often wonder if it, like. But we get these good games in America, but I wonder if they had that problem in Japan, where they probably have a little more common sense than what they named this stuff. So, and, and the funny thing about this thing, um, when they released it, they thought they were going to be competing against a, uh, a, 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 a Super Nintendo CD-ROM based right. system, which that never obviously occurred. Uh, this was the first system to introduce the CD-ROM format, uh, which was uh, officially released by Sony and Philips just right before it released. And this predates the FM Towns computer by a couple months and of course it was out way before the other C D yes. consoles. So that thought yeah. was interesting. Now I don't know if it came to Mar I don't know how it works because I've always heard the FM Towns Marty was the first C D based console. Uh but I so I don't know if this actually hit the market before the Marty. Well I during You've my research yes that. during my research uh it looks like this actually came out first. Oh yeah. Uh but I don't know why FM Towns gets the credit. I don't know. So it's, I don't it was know. real close. It, it was. It was really close. Now, of course, they re, they remade the, the duo in the states, and they and it was released in North America as the PC Engine duo or the Turbo duo. So apparently, they used both titles over here because that's not going to get confusing. Well, listen, I don't know what to tell you, pal. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, that with the with the duo, you don't have to have a card to boot off the CD unless you're playing a Super System game. Which, you know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, that ha that uh, arcade card I told you about, there weren't that many games that were released yeah, yeah. For, that, for that thing. Like I said, I don't think that, and none of that stuff actually got to the, got to the States. Uh, of course, the uh, CD-ROM system, one of the advantages of buying a duo, it's got extra memory in it, uh, which is always nice. Uh, they were also planning an online element. Uh, yep. But uh, that, didn't, that, didn't, it, uh, it, it didn't pan out. Um. I looked at some of the titles for this thing. Did you have a? Did you tiptoe through the tulips on this? Thing? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot. I look mainly at the Japanese side. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, anime story games. Um, a lot of role playing games. Uh, a, a fair amount of shooters. Um, I looked at. You know, a fair amount is an understatement. This yeah. thing, it's shooter mania. Run it, yeah, wild. it has a lot of shooters, especially if you've got the Japanese version. <clears throat> um, I I played. There were some of these I'd heard about, and I was like, I got to give some of these a shot. Uh, Lords of Thunder was one. The art. There was a couple art type games I played on there. Then another game that's I've heard about a million times is this is this game called Wise, like the letter Y. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a which is a some sort of a crazy RPG. Yeah, I, I looked at it just because I'd heard so much about it. Well, you can't you can't just these, glance at a, a game of these, like oh, that. I'm not, I'm not judging it. I'm just saying I looked okay. at it. Uh, a lot of these uh, RPG games, it's like anime to mania. It's a lot like the yeah. uh, uh, and what was the machine we did where it was like all anime all the time. That's basically this was this was sort of similar to that in some ways. So if they had enough common sense to put some other stuff on there, and you've got your occasional driving game and and. Whatnot, but the shooters on it look great. I will say that. Yeah. And as great as they the shooters are on the Turbo Graphics, uh, man, the CD element really they really map ramped up. To, and certainly the sound quality was off the charts. I mean, sure. It was, it was bread book audio, so you're getting you're getting the, you're getting the good stuff. Um, so <coughs> this thing died to death over here, and we never saw it. And there cannot be that many Turbo duos out. I, this thing when I looked at Wiki to see what the scoop was on these duos. It said, it's what it, this is what it said, and I find this number unbelievably untrue. And maybe they were talking about every CD system released. I Did you see the 10 million figure? Yeah, that's the one I saw. Yeah, I think it's that's true. That's got to be, that what? You no. really do? Yeah, I, but I think it's worldwide. It's not U.S. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, it's, but I mean, 10 million, that's yeah. hard to believe. No, it was, this system was really popular in Japan for a short while. I mean, you can. Aaron, it beat up the NES for a while. Well, I'm just even saying, at the end of the NES's console life, that's a big deal. That that's a lot of uh, that's a <clears> lot <throat> of uh, uh, that's a lot of units. That's it all is. I'm saying it is, but I, I I can I can believe it. I can believe the ten minute because I actually saw that multiple places. Of course, Did one you? might be pulling from another. Right. So, well, we had uh, we took a look at the at the vast library, of, and we were like, this is another one of those libraries that I had very little limited experience. And it's no funny. knowledge of. My Xbox has a full slate of these, and now my emulator does. And But I'd played very few. Yeah. So, and so I was like, well, let's give this a whirl. And we picked out a couple. Uh, now, uh, Brent, 
we didn't make any formal agreement to pick only U.S. titles or only Japanese titles, so we uh, we picked one of each, effectively. Yeah. Uh, uh, which, uh, in retrospect, uh, we probably should have stuck to one or the other, but we picked one of each. And so, yeah, it was Brent. He he botched it. So, uh, Brent, why don't you start out with your uh, interesting title? And I'm you hear the side commentary in my voice. Well, I, I picked uh, Pop and Magic. Pop and lock. Pop it like it's hot. No, no. pop and magic. Uh, which, this is a obscure title, sort of. Uh, I'm not saying it's super rare. I'm not saying that, uh, uh, you know, you can't find copies of it, because we'll get to that on the eBay <laughs> That's section. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but uh, this is just a game that it came out. I, I don't think it did particularly well, and then it went away, and everyone has forgotten about it. If you go on YouTube, you can't find anyone doing reviews on it. Uh, there is a, a Nintendo game called Magical Pop Yeah. that anytime you do a search for Pop and Magic comes up. Yeah, they, they're not the same game. No, right? not yeah. even close. They're the radically Nintendo different. Okay. Radically different. So, Pop and Magic was released by Riot slash Telnet in uh, July of 92. I've never heard of any of these people. Well, (laughs) Riot, uh, the only thing that you might have heard of is one of the last things they did was Wild Arms. Oh, yeah. Now that I have heard of. (coughs) Uh, They shut me up, didn't you? (laughs) uh, (laughs) It's a very popular game. And Telnet was their sort of their parent company. They were under them. And then uh, I believe... Uh, they all got swallowed up by someone. I can't recall right now who did the swallowing, but they no one is uh, currently... Uh, there is no Riot. There is no Telenet. There is all Only that got... Soul. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> all that got uh, consumed. Uh-huh. So, but they did a lot of uh, turbographic games. So they had a, you know, a pedigree. So Pop and Magic is a single-screen... Per level game, uh, a la this was in the bubble bobble area when bubble bobble type games were becoming very popular. Um, however, people who compare it to bubble bobble, I certainly understand why. I don't think it's enough like bubble bobble to be considered a bubble bobble clone. It does a few things very uniquely uh, that make it, a, to me, a very interesting title. You run around as either Pop or Magic. There are two characters in the game. Nothing like Bubble Bobble there. Well, (laughs) hey. And that where you're Bub or Bob. Uh, Keep going. And you are collecting uh, magical gems to restore peace to the land. And and you, uh, uh, the way you do this is you take your magical wand and you hit them with spells that turns them into magical orbs. Uh... You can then pick up the magical orb. You can just mash the wand button a lot of times and blow up the orbs. That is one way of defeating the enemy. The other, uh, more preferred method, though, is to pick up the colored orbs and hit them against a different color orbs. They can either be blue, yellow, or red. And different enemies become different colored orbs. So... You, you trap an enemy in an orb, he becomes a blue orb, then you trap another enemy in a red orb, throw the red orb at the blue orb, uh, the red orb will explode into a bunch of treats and candy and money and everything else, and you power-ups and you go collect it. It's a dead man pi- pinata. Yeah, pretty much. You it's... kill your opponent and then he explodes in goodies. And, and if Can I, you my, imagine if that happened in the real world? My favorite part of it yeah. is... Uh, uh, once you throw them and, and, they, and they start bouncing around the, the level, uh, drop dispensing goodies everywhere, you can actually pick them back up at that point and slam them into a wall to make them drop more goodies keep, over and over. I mean, eventually, they'll, eventually they will officially die, but they're monsters, so screw them. Yeah, well, um, but the, uh, 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 the point of the game is to advance, get through the levels, get all these gems, and that's how you defeat your enemies. The um, alternative bit of gameplay are their bosses. Now, the bosses, ha- there are no orbs. It's all, you have to do all the damage with your magic wand and hit the enemies. And some of the bad guys are insane. Uh, there are, it's very Japanese. It's very, you know, uh, your enemies are uh, 
crab monsters or uh, a bunny riding unicorn or unicycles. Uh, like plate the bunny who rides a unicycle while spinning plates. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a uh, one of the bosses is a uh, undead Japanese maid who <laughs> bounces around the room, and her attack is to drop dishes, and the dishes hit the floors, explode, and the, you have to dodge the shrapnel. Uh, there it's are goofy. There are two lizards that climb around that you have to fight. It's a very Japanese game. Indeed. Um, <clears throat> the CD claim to fame on this is the uh, after every section of levels, you watch an extended anime it's, sequence. It's a 20-minute anime, but don't forget the opening anime yeah, that sets up the story. Uh, the anime sequences are long. Uh, they're well done. They're, I, I, the, they sound well-voiced. Of course, it's all in Japanese. Did you, so. did you get... I don't know if you mentioned... Did you say anything? What is the plot of this game? Because I, clearly, I yeah, did not pick you, it up. You you, you were uh, uh, tasked with finding four gems. Right. I saw that. And that res- to restore peace to the world. That's it. Yeah. Well, what's all that rigmarole that it, it takes forever to get through? What are well, those people talking about? Well, I think Pop and Magic have a, a unique relationship where uh, Pop, who I believe is the girl... Com- <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, continuously abuses her male counterpart and makes fun of him and gets angry. Sounds like my life. <laughs> it's, well, I, it's, I'm definitely magic in that relationship. Uh, it's 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 a very uh, uh, Japanese, you know, their culture thing. That's the kind of thing that they do. Um, well, it is. You always see the the, the strong female and they're not, protagonist. Not hurry to finish it either. Uh, those the anime sequences are very extended. Uh, but why do I like this game? Because I do like this game. Actually, I like this game way, way more than Bubble Bobble. Um, and I, do I like it as, more than Rodlin? Uh, it's close. I, it would be close. The reason why I like this game is it's, it's a huge point press. Yes, it's way safer to take your rod, or to take your <laughs> uh, uh, magic spells and blow up the orbs. Because if two of the same color orbs ever touch, both enemies are released. So they're free and they run around again. Uh, So it's a huge risk to take the orbs. When you throw them, they don't just dink, dink, dink and then stop. They can bounce all around the screen. They can go through the bottom of the screen and appear at the top. You know, the screen wraps up and down and left and right. Uh, You can... uh, uh, Throw it and hit multiple things, which makes more goodies come out. It's all about point pressing because all those items that you pick up give you more points, which is which is the fun part of it. Yeah. The bosses, if you kill a boss at the top of the screen, he will drop more goodies than if he was at the bottom of the screen because he drops goodies all the way he falls. And it's not an equal amount. If you kill him at the top, they just spew out goods for the that. entire That's time. Good. That is kind of good. I'll give it that. Um, That's pretty good. Also in the game, which this isn't mentioned anywhere, so I don't know if it's just people don't think it's useful or what, you can hold up on the controller and hit your magic button and you charge. And if you charge up enough, you'll shoot this huge magic spell that does different things. Uh, uh, the, the one that you start with, it just makes orbs come out and just crushes everything on the screen and then it waves again. It's like two waves of, of crushing orbs. Yeah, the first time I noticed this, I was like, do it by accident? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was I, actually yeah. looking for it, and I, I found it. Uh, really enjoy this game. The color, the graphics are colorful. The music is catchy. Uh, the World 3 music, which is this beach-themed music, and it's all uh, uh, mini, uh, midi or, you know, musical instruments type music. Uh-huh. Uh, great fun. It's oh, it's upbeat, and it's happy, and it's, it's, you know, you're fighting different types of enemy every stage. I'm, this isn't my favorite game of all time or anything. I'm not saying anything like that. But this is worth picking up and looking at. You can play it right in your browser if you want to go the emulation route. Certainly, uh, uh, this is a, certainly a win for me. I'm not going to brag on the game. It's, it's fun enough. I mean, it is. Someone... And it's two players simultaneous if you, can, if you have the right. multi-tap. Someone asked the question, what would happen if we took Bubble Bobble and Rodlin and elements of Liquid Kids and mushed them into a, into a game? And this, is, and this is what you get. 
Uh, I will, yes. Uh, I, I will agree. They definitely, they took the formula of a bubble to bubble type game and they tried to make it their own and I think they did a decent job on it. Well, um, it's pretty well known that I'm not a huge fan of the single screen games like this. I don't have a problem with them and I can understand why people love them, but I don't love them that much. So, uh, um, this game was a lot like the other ones. Now, do I prefer this to, say, Rodland? No. I, but probably because well, I, I play Rodland close. a lot. Yeah. You know, uh, do I prefer this to something like Bubble Bobble? About the same. Do I prefer this to a game where that's not a single scrolling game, but it's the same principle of with Liquid Kids? No. Liquid Kids is far and away. Of, I know it's, it's sort of different because it's a, it's a run around game, but I mean, it's you have it's basically a, a, that. Ru- Liquid Kids is the answer to what would we what would Bubble Bubble be like if it was a scrolling right. like game? <clears throat> yeah, uh, and so that's the one I prefer. Now that much said, this game is fine. Here's my beef with this. Okay, this is a CD-ROM game. Yes. Okay, this ain't no CD-ROM game. Okay. It's no, not. I agree. This could have went on any Who card with no problem, with the exception, with the exception of, of the, the, of the anime cutscenes, which no one wants. Now they may be well, great in Japan, which just was released in Japan, yeah, not in America. So that's that's all well and good. But this is your classic example of taking a game, flip it on some extra crappyola, and and like print it. That's it. We're gonna release this sucker as is. Yeah. And so what you've got here? I would here, fully agree with that. You've got a non CD game. Uh, that's been released for a CD system, and you heard all the crap you got to go through to get these things going. Uh, you're talking bucks. I want some action. I want some big deals. Uh, and I don't think there's. I mean, there's plenty of content. There's, le- you know, I think I watched the. Oh, there play are tons the of went Like an hour and a half. Yeah, you know, it's like but, I mean, it's about a two hour. Don't game. expect uh, uh, polymorphic three dimensional fog no. to start appearing. It ain't gonna happen, brother. You're no. getting straight up. Single screen action. Now I'll admit some of the bosses are amusing. Yeah. I mean, all uh, much like the Tato games, they're all amusing. They're good games, but um, this one is just another one on the pile for me. I didn't. It didn't show me anything that I hadn't seen before. You know, if you're going to play a game like like another one, Rainbow Islands is another game of, in this genre. Except this goes up and there's a there's a little bit more. But I mean, these cutesy. Like a weird creature, colorful romps or whatever, mm-hmm. they're okay. Yeah. You know, don't got a problem with them. They're not my bag. No, I get that. And, and this game, while I don't have a problem with it, and getting this thing to run on my emulation device was a real pain in the butt. And I had to go use his gimmick because when I tried to run it on my emulator, the screen comes up and it says, like, oh, no, no, hold on. And there's some writing and then you can't do anything. So maybe I don't have the right Who card stuck into my emulator to get it to work. Uh, so if you're going to run this one, I would suggest running it through the browser, and if you know what in the heck I'm looking at, write me a note. But overall, <laughs> man, that's my response. Uh, uh, as a CD-ROM game, pfft, no good. I, I will, I will certainly agree. This did not use the CD uh, space properly, and they do lose points for that because I think if you have a, if you go to a CD-ROM, you should have CD reasons to go to a CD-ROM. Not just the gimmick of being a CD-ROM. I mean, this ain't the only game that is guilty of that crime. <laughs> well, yeah. You know? But, uh, but, but that, uh, it, it the is an- one that's guilty. The anime elements of it are extensive. I don't... These aren't, like, one 30-second no. clips. They are, like, 15 minutes yeah. between stages. You really, and they go on. And and God and it has zero effect on the game, as far as I can tell. Like, it's well, like, it's a it's the story. It's of just it. some cutesy junk they stuck on here and to make it a CD game. It, it is. Well, I don't know about cutesy, but yeah, it's, it's. What do you mean? It's as cute as it gets. Pudgy little goofs dancing around the woods and don't, don't boring. Don't forget their uh, their rat companion. Their rat. They got a rat. <laughs> both of them. To both have each uh, an individual rat. But here's the thing: the game is fun enough. It's worth checking out. Endorsement. If you want, if you like point pressing games, if point pressing games are your are your thing, this is a fun game because uh, bouncing one of those orbs correctly and getting three or four hits and watching all the goodies fly out is very rewarding. Very hey, rewarding. Hey, it's okay. Did you, see so, a, did you see a price on this thing? This, yes, I did. eBay. <laughs> eBay's a funny place. <laughs> it is hilarious um, sometimes. Oh. You can get this game still sealed yeah. for about 85 bucks. Okay. Now, if you add in the Pop and Magic 
Sun Visor. That yeah. apparently, th- apparently they thought this game was going to be more than it was because they they have they made other stuff uh, branded with the logo and stuff. Yeah, uh, that's going to cost you one hundred and eighty five dollars. <laughs> that's that is a one expensive plastic now, sun visor. Now, was this game released for anything else? And also, nope. is this game based on an arcade? I don't think it was. No. Was it? So nope. So this is it. Eh? This is it. Well, if you, you want to play it, this is the way you got to do it. There you go. Would love to see a translation of the anime scenes. By the I, way, I wouldn't. I don't care. That. I would. That'd be fun. What do you have for us? Listen, you know when I take it to the hoop, I go in hard and fast. And I pick this game just like I pick most of my games. Game with the coolest name wins. And that's the way I like to do it. So this week, we're going to be talking about the Riot Zone. The Riot Zone, Brick. Come on. Uh, you airballed on this one. What do you... But go ahead. How dare you. Go, so, run your spiel, little man. Let me tell you something. The Riot Zone was a game released, I love the name of the developer, The Agenda Company. That is <laughs> that is the, the best aspect. That's right. Published by Hudson Soft, the, yeah, the Grand Masters of the Turbo Graphics. And this actually was released in Japan in 1992 and made its North American debut February 26th of 93. And uh, this also got released on the Wii Virtual Console. So if you decide Unreal. you want to go get some Riot action in your life, Unreal. So, what is the scoop on Riot Zone? Before we get into Riot Zone, let's talk about a little game. I mean, I think this is a a, a game that was popular in all arcades all across the country. Final Fight? No, no. It was called Riot City. (laughs) And in Riot City, released by, developed by West, West One and published by Sega for the arcades in 1991. Have you ever heard of a game called Fighter's History? Yes. Of course you have. And what's it known for? Uh, being mediocre. Uh, no, more, more. Give me more. Oh, the history of fighters being in it. No, you're an idiot. Okay. So <laughs> what's it known for? It's known for being an exact duplicate of Street Fighter in almost every way. It got, they got sued. They to East with the court to fight. To yeah, keep this lost. game on the shelves. Let me tell you something. Clearly, uh, after that lawsuit... Sega was like, oh, yeah? Screw you, Capcom. Final fight, my hiney. <laughs> and so they released Riot City. Riot City is an exact duplicate in every, down to every minute detail. Minus of, the fun. Of, of final fight in every way. Uh, you play uh, one of two uh, cops who have to go bring this gang down that's kidnapped a chick, the whole nine yards. And you... Uh, <laughs> Got, and they're both looks like happy, friendly cops. They go out to kick some butt. Uh, this game, I don't know if this ever got released in the states. This ran on the Sega sixteen, uh, the Sega System sixteen B hardware. You know anything else that nope. ran on there on top of your head? Nope. So in this game, uh, you're now this is Riot City. You're talking about this is about. Riot City okay. the arcade game. And there's a connection. Uh, Paul and Bobby are committed to putting an end to the drug syndicate known as MID. M I D. Uh, they have to go to the secret hideout of Mid on Riot Island. Of course. Who named that island? You well, know? A lot of riots no, there. No good name. So they have to go through all the different parts of the island to find all the Mid agents. And then uh, Mid, he, Paul finds out that Mid has captured his girlfriend, Catherine. All right, not good. So now it's time to go whoop a butt. And they go to Riot Island to save her. Plus, they're going to bring Mid down. So with that... Uh, Riveting plot for Riot City. You're tasked with going to the city, whooping that butt uh, with your jump and your punch. You go through and kick everything, crush everything, do all the damage, and then uh, uh, rescue the girl. If you've ever played Final Fight, it's exactly the same. It's exactly yeah. the same, isn't it? Um, the, uh, including the bars at the top of the screen, and with your health, the same colored bars are used. The same exact, almost the same font. Right, this thing is identical. The only thing that's missing is, uh, aside from originality, is that it's not quite as good as Final Fight. It's okay. It's okay. It's got good music. It's okay. So, and presumably this game did well enough uh, in the arcades that Westwood was like, all right, we're going to take this baby to the house. We're going to release this on the big money maker. And you know, the money maker is going to be this, the uh, Turbo Graphics 16, of course. And so they wanted to release this thing. Well, Sega was like, you know, we own half this game. Yeah, we don't want to do it. 
we got our own thing going on, and our thing is going to be uh, uh, our own beat em ups, right? Streets of Rage. You get what I'm saying? A definite upgrade. Yes. Westwood was like, oh, yeah? Well, we're not giving up. We're going to release this game, but you can't, right? Because Sega's got half the license. Listen, if we can rip off Capcom, we can sure as heck screw over Sega and <laughs> screw them they did. <laughs> this this uh, is the boiling cauldron that Riot Zone was birthed in as it came up. Uh, so <clears throat> what they did was they took, they took what their assets and whatnot from Riot City and they just slightly tweaked them. The plot in this is sort of similar. Um, evil gangs kidnapped your guy's chick, okay? Yep. You've got two detectives in this, Hawk and, uh, and Tony. Hawk uh, is basically the modified white guy from... from Cody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, not Cody. Uh, uh, from, Cody's from Final Fight. But this guy looks... Like, that, he was, the, the, guy in, the, the guy in Riot City was comparable to Cody. All right, this guy looks a lot like that guy. Now the the uh, black gentleman that was in it, he got switched to an Indian, a Native American, if you will, and he changed his name and changed his name to uh, to, uh, to Tony. Now Tony is an Af- he's a Native American guy with a mohawk and some tattoos on his head or yes. some writing. I don't know what the heck's going on. Oh, either. and oh, by the way, he break dances. Yeah. Because why not? Makes sense. Well, the, the other guy broke dance, so they're not going to change that much. The game opens with a tremendous scene. This is way better, way more entertaining than the, the anime crap I'd sit through. These two guys walk in, and the, 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 the detective, the head detective, the police chief, whoever he is, he's back. He's kicked back at his desk. He's a classic cop chief guy. Yes. Ty looks all disgruntled. Bald. And they're like, we're going to go. He's like, we're, we're going after these guys. He's like, eh, let it go. Yeah, he's like, here's like, a bit of fatherly advice. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah, and they're like, wait a minute, but my girlfriend, they're like, nah. And so what do they do? They do what any good cop does. They throw their badge, their gun, and their freaking cuffs down the desk. They're like, screw you, chief. That's what they say. We're going for it. <laughs> and, of course, the Native American guy can't let the other guy go without him. He's like, I'm in too. And that's how you start the game. Now, he's not in two. It's a problem <laughs> because one of the first shortcomings you're going to see from Riot, from Riot Zone is You've got the choice between the two main characters, the pro- Hawk and Tony, but the problem is you can't play them both simultaneously. No. There's no two-player support. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, when you have one control port, why put in two? <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought, okay, I've, you know, maybe it's, I don't have this set up right. No, you can play one player. Uh, which I believe that wasn't there. Did the Super Nintendo version of Final Fight have the same problem? Wasn't no. There, well, somebody the, else released one of these beat us. You could only play one player. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, so that is a big problem. You, <laughs> if you, you've got you've got to, to play this by yourself. You can't have your buddy because my kid wanted to play it. And I'm like, sorry, kid. Um, well, and <laughs> I'm just saying that's what happened. Well, yeah, he wanted to play it until he saw me play it for a while. <laughs> So, you've got to go rescue your girlfriend, okay? No problemo. Uh, and so, to do that, you've got to run through the city. Now, there are multiple rounds in this game. And it literally, when I say this is the exact duplicate of, of uh, um, Final, Final Fight. Fight, the map that comes up in Final Fight that highlights the part of the city you're in, it comes up on here. Yeah, that big, a big map of the city, three, well, three-dimensionally kind of rendered map, and it flashes, and that's the part of yeah. So, on the, and, and I mean... To be fair, they also ripped off Gunsmoke. They did. Because, they did. Because, well, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Okay. All so, right. I don't you, want to spoil it. Once you pick Hawk or Tony, now who did you pick? I, I played. I played a little bit of both, but I, I beat the game with uh, with with the Hawk. I beat the guy the game with non Mohawk guy. Yeah, me too. That, yeah, that's that's who I played. Non Mohawk guy. So when you start the game, there's this alley full of like these wanted posters, which, yeah. you, which you totally don't even know what they are. When that first, I didn't know what they, was going on, but you, you know, just so in the first round, you're going after the eight thousand dollar guy, right? No, no, no. It, it, it his his their bounty is five thousand point dollars. Oh yeah, eight thousand <laughs> point dollars. It says the dollar sign, then it says points at the, at the end, though. It says, <laughs> That's when you know you're in a winner. So. The first level, here come the here come the Stooges. And one thing I notice about this game is the backgrounds and a lot of it are as bland and uninteresting as you could possibly make them. 
Like, there's stuff missing, it looks like. It looks like they just said, like, eh, good enough. <laughs> I mean, like, example of a background, all right? This is an actual background. There's a railing or a... Uh, it's or, uh, like a or like a uh, guardrail mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, it blackness out the back and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the background. Yeah, <laughs> and with and you fight in front of this incredible luxurious background. Yeah. In the first round, you get to fight a bunch. Like this is just like a uh, final fight. In in that, they it's a parade of jobbers that come out yes. geeks to come out and beat up. In the first round, you get to fight Bonnie, Charlie, Johnny, Paula, Slim, and Thin Liz. Which makes that makes you think, man, that's a lot of characters. No. No. They were color swap -a mania Yeah, and, and well, and also they they're all pretty much exactly the same type of guy. You just yeah. smack them around. In fact, the very first person you punch is a girl. <laughs> yeah. When you take I mean, often when you take down gangs, gang, roving gangs, you walk up to the first girl you see and you just punch her right in the face. The funny thing about it, it's not that funny. In this game, it's exactly the same setup as you see in a lot of these games. You've got your geeks, your straight up geeks. They do nothing. Yeah. Then you've got the fat guys. There's always a big, huge wad of fat guys. Now, this game had a couple of different varieties of fat guy. One of them, if you're a wrestling fan, looked a lot like uh, uh, Viscera or, or uh, 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 if you ever, you remember the huge guy? He used to be King Mabel. He wore this like he was so fat and tall. He was like six ten, and he weighed about six hundred pounds. And he wore this like it almost looked like he was wearing a huge trash bag. <laughs> And he had a white mohawk. Do you remember those guys yes. in the game? Look just like him, if, if, if Big Daddy V. But anyways, the, so you've got to have the fat guys. Then you've got the quick guys that come in. In, in uh, Final Fight, you get those little jerks that slide around the dagger. With those throw the knives. And then yeah. you've got these ninja guys. They have like almost like a side. They kind of do these diving. They're, I mean, they're, I don't, they don't look like ninjas. They, they're hooded or something. Well, no, I would compare the knife throwing guys to the guys that actually do the slide. The yeah, yeah, exact but I mean, you've got same knife slide. Guys, and you've got slide guys. And by the way, much like Final Fight, these guys are cheap. They'll run off the screen. They'll, but I didn't find I played this game on easy, and I didn't have any trouble getting through it. It was super simple. So anyway, on the first level, you're you're at when you get to the end of it, you're going to fight. Uh, you really actually fight two people. It starts off with Mister Lee. Mister Lee happens to be a Chinese-looking guy that goes like whoa and fights martial arts just like Bruce Lee, except lamer. So he smacks Mister Lee around. And he takes off, and eventually you hook up with Mister Lee and Mrs. Chan. Now, which is they try to double team you, and I didn't have any trouble smacking these suckers no. around. And then once you do this, there's a there's a Really stupid. Why didn't they use animation here? There's a picture of your guy slowly walking in this alley, and he takes a knife and jabs it into the wanted poster. I guess that's where he claims his reward point. Well, and, and it is it is dead on to uh, uh, gun smoke. When they do the exact same thing, you get to the wanted poster and you stick your knife in it, the exact same carbon copy. Yeah. Now, I was flipping through the... Uh, I was flipping... Believe it or not, there's a game fact on this. I couldn't believe sure. it. Sure. And... One thing the game fact says, I didn't really notice this. Maybe you did. They, they, you will never have more than three enemies on yes. the screen at once. But unlike a lot of games, like the enemies show up like a lot and just out of nowhere yeah. on this one. Like they they show up a lot more as opposed to you walking and they show up because I yeah. guess it's to do that to, to save backgrounds. So the second boss was so lame that I literally beat the crap out of her without even knowing it was a boss. Yes. Yeah. Her name is Shoshana, and of course. If you have a game like this, what do you got to have? You got to have some kind of dominatrix. Yep. This is a crappy dominatrix because I dominated crap out of her. She 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 learned what it was like to be humble. She was the submissive, sir. For sure. As I beat her down, and she was such a puss. I just crushed her. I couldn't believe how easy it was. Then the third round, you've got you uh you, the boss is Lance. All right now. Lance was the best boss in my opinion. Is that the wrestler boss? Now, Lance is the boss that has the spikes. He's like almost oh, like the porcupine. It reminded me of my champion's character, yeah. porcupine. He's a guy who has this like spiked suit, yeah. and he'll do roles and stuff like Blanca, you know. But and he, again, none of these bosses were that tough. But I found him the most tough. He was tough because he would, if you were trying to wail at him, he would just spike you occasionally. There's not much you can do about that. Uh, round four, you fight Fuji. All right, that's the wrestler boss. Yeah, this guy. Because if you remember in Final Fight, you go into a ring and fight yeah. a boss. Yeah, that do means that you know what you got to do here. <laughs> Something I also want to mention is that neither one of these characters have any, they, un, they what? If there's no door, they were more than happy to go down through a wall. Now what? that happens in Final Fight once, but the, my favorite part was this guy. He he was in an alley <laughs> and he just walks up this dead end and he goes like, Puh! and he smashes the wall and behind it is another wall. 
He smashes out. <laughs> I thought to myself, why did they put that in here? <coughs> why did he smash through two walls? Uh, when he, he goes up and he bam, he goes bam, 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 and the wall crumbles and there's a steel wall behind it. I wanted him to just go and walk off so bad. Because it, it seems to me that if you smash through one wall and there's another one, that could be a load bearing wall. Well, like, do you really want to be smashing in that? later levels? There's a door like in the background off like oh, like, it's it looks not like part of the scene. Yeah, it, yeah, and he and the, he still walks up. He's like. Come on, through punches the wall. through the wall. Despite the fact there's a door clearly in the scene. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. So once you get past Fuji, you're then you get to ride the elevator to the top floor of the, of the penthouse, much like in Final Fight, <laughs> the, the fight the end boss. So the end boss is this sort of blonde jerk. I guess that's his name, Quinn, right? And he's nondescript. The other guy, he's, he does like an elbow. I didn't think he was that tough yeah. either. I smacked him around. And once, you, of course, in the background... But you know it's not that easy. There's a big suit of armor. Tora. Tora is the suit of armor that comes yeah. to life. And I don't know if there's a guy in the armor. I don't know if it's a robot. It makes no sense. So you wail on Tora, and then uh, and then and the game ends in a very unsatisfying way. I mean, yes, yeah, you rescue the, the daughter or the girlfriend or whatever it was, and it's over. And the funny thing is, at the end of the game, sure enough, it shows both the characters going like, "Ah, we did it." It's yeah. like, no, you didn't. There was one of you here. The yeah. other one didn't even show up. Yeah. The. Uh, uh, I guess the gimmick in this game, you remember in uh, uh, in Final Fight, you had uh, a special move you could do. Uh, these guys have a special move. Yeah. One of the special moves, the the, uh, uh, the non-Native American does this thing where he goes like Twister, and he sort of pivots completely <laughs> upside down and spins around like a top. He puts his arms out like a T, yeah. and then spins up in the air and back down. And, and then knocks then everyone down yeah. for whatever reason. And the... <laughs> The Native American guy, and this guy, see, if you watch the the intro, he looks like he's, it seems like he's like in his 40s. Yeah. But for whatever reason, this Native American is a world-class break dancer. So his, his big maneuver, he does, he gets on the ground and does that bit where you spin around, yeah. you know, and his legs are flailing out, and, he, and, he, and, he, and that's how he knocks guys down. Um, Goofy is the word oh. that comes to mind. Goofy, that character, the Native American break dancing middle-aged guy is one of the goofier characters we've run across in our yeah. travels. So... Um, are there any points in this game that are good? Yeah, I like the soundtrack. It was it's Red Book Audio soundtrack. It was sounding. It was very. It got you very fired up. It was that kind of music. You know, meh, 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 it did meh. not fit the scene at all. Oh, I thought it did. I thought it got you fired up. Lots of guitar. You know, like, lots of stuff like that. That yeah, was tons, tons of electric I mean, guitar. Here's the thing: is it generic? Oh man, oh, is it? But it's a good sort of generic that you would expect. This is like watching one of those movies that like. Two in the morning. That's what this reminds me of. It's like, this is, I mean, this would have came, this would have left from the typewriter of Hollywood's worst hack, this film, you know. Uh, and also, what if they ever dealt with the crooked uh, cheat? <laughs> First thing I would have done is I would have stuck a knife to this guy instead of putting it to the wall. I mean, this guy's clearly on the tape. Now, from what I read, this guy was, he was in big to the mob because of gambling debts. That's what it said. <laughs> What? That's what, the, that's what the facts said. I was like, well, that would explain it. So I would I would off him immediately because even if he rescued the girl, he's still there. He's still crooked. I think that's the sequel they were setting up, which unfortunately <laughs> never n- never occurred. Um, now, is this game any good? The answer is yes, and I'll explain why. It's if you like Final Fight and you want to play a game that's exactly like Final Fight in every way, but isn't Final Fight and your and your expectations are low, this is the game for you. It plays just like Final Fight. You, one thing. So, just, so if you're like, man, well, I want to play some Final Fight, but Final Fight's just too darn good and interesting. Well, I mean, here's the thing, Brandy. Okay. If you've got the one thing this does not well that Final Fight does well is in Final Fight you sort of have a, you feel like you're progressing. And it, very rarely do you feel like you're just going scene to scene and beating a guy up. Right? You're right. In this game, you feel like, okay, I've moved five inches, here comes the fight. I've moved five more inches, here comes the fight. And, that's, and so you do, it does get old. But the mechanics and stuff and the control, the controls are perfectly fine. They work great. And it plays fine. It plays just like a Final Fight game. But it, the, except uh, uh, it's just not as polished. Okay. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off here. What's new? <clears throat> what do you got? I, yeah, I'm going to let you finish, but let me jump in here. All right. This game is garbage. The animations are garbage. The sprites are garbage. It is a muddy, pixelated mess. Nothing looks good. Well, it is on, do a, they it look is like, on the turbo no, graphics. Quiet, you. 
Do they look like humanoid shapes? Some of them kind oh, of. Oh, thou, you're being ridiculous. They yeah, look, I, they look okay. They don't look they're okay. They're on the same level they, as like a as like a Streets of Rage or something. No, they're in the ballpark. Not even close. They're in the ballpark. They they're are the ballpark. muddy. They are muddy pixelated. The backgrounds the, are muddy. I'll the give you backgrounds that. are so uninspired. Like I, they they had have given somebody in a lobotomy and said make a background. They are horrible. <laughs> No, no, they 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 range from good to bad. The sound, the soundtrack, is by far the best, yeah. and it's crap. Oh, it's not it crap. It is so no. much electric guitar riffing over and over and over. That's what you want in a game like this. No, well, yeah, for one stage, it'd have been great. I'd like to see it you guys occasionally little... stop and just play air guitar to go along with it. That's what <laughs> the, they should have done. There, the uh, uh, the sound effects of this game trash. The things you pick up, you know, they are stupid. When you have a game, you pick up clogs for one at one point. When you have a game like this, radios, there are only lighters. so many things that you can do to make it interesting. And this game looked at all those things, things you can pick up, yeah. weapons you can have, which no, is zero. Uh, no weapons. The special moves you can have, which is one. Yeah. And literally, you it's punch, jump, special move. That's it. You know, I will say the Indian, he does an his one of his moves is awesome. The move where you jump straight up and he kicks out like Von Dahm no, to the side. That's a that's pretty, not it awesome. looks great to see his middle aged Native American doing a Von Dahm kick. No. Come on, that didn't amuse you? Now both of us beat this game, which lets you know it, it's at least short. It's at least kind enough to end. The absolute one hundred percent best part of this game is the first fifteen seconds of intro. Because you don't have to play that. Oh, God. Now, Lat, you're just being needlessly no, cruel. No, no. This game... It's a perfectly serviceable generic game. No, That's what I think. I No. no my game was a perfectly serviceable generic Yours game. Was, your game was... I mean, it was... Your more, game has no redeeming qualities, man. It is. If you like beat-em-ups, it's okay. I play a ton of beat-em-ups. This there is not are, far, not the worst. There are hundreds of beat-em-ups out there. This might be the worst one I've ever played. No way. Because, Are yes. You nuts? Yes. No. Because there is nothing about it that stands out or is fun. No. I there just, is I no disagree. fun to be had it's here. It's exactly like a crappy version of Final Fight. It, Final Fight's fun. Don't give me you're that. You're right. It is a crappy version of Final Fight, so why wouldn't I just play Final well, Fight? Well, you've beaten Final Fight. Me and the kid have beat a lot of these games and said, so we're going to go and play Riot City. No, you're we're not. One of you is. No, Riot City. Oh. Not Riot Zone. We can't <laughs> play that two-player. No, it, they did. I mean, listen. Every solid, step, every step was a misstep. There's no doubt. Solid pass. You know what? I believe we have some reviews from the uh, the uh, council on this. Let's see what they you said. You want to bring those up on there? I will bring them up on my handy dandy. While he's looking that up, let me uh, let me, uh, let me further enrage you with the prices I found on this. So I did look this up on the eBay. First of all, I found reviews for this. By the way, IGN gave this four out of ten. <laughs> Not so good. Eurogamer, 2 out of 10. And Nintendo Life, and while I guess they were doing this for the Wii console, 5 out of 10. Now, here's the painful part. On eBay, I looked around. You can't get this game any cheaper than 115 US dollar bills. Never, dollar never. And one recently sold for $133. That's insane. It's brilliant. It was a brilliant move, sir. I'm, I salute you to pay that much money... Because that's a passionate key collector for the Turbo uh, Who is that fine gentleman? That's Graham. Graham, that guy. Key. I didn't know what his actual name was. Uh, we have a review this week from Graham. <clears throat> we'll start with a little bit of Poppin' Magic. An amazing single screen platform game in the style of Bubble Bobble, where you trap enemies in bubbles using your wand and throw them to destroy them. Bubbles are in different colors but you can't throw the same color together as it re-releases the enemy. Such a great game, 9 out of 10. Now, I think 9 out of 10 is being a little fair, but I like your style, man. Uh, he also gave us a review of Riot Zone. A side-scrolling beat-em-up with colorful, large sprites. They are large, I'll give you that. And in charge. Um, and an initial feeling of Final Fight. 
There is a choice between two characters with the usual actions, and it is a de decent button masher, even though at times it is repetitive and looks incomplete for a Hudson game. Being repetitive is its job. Six out of ten. Yes, I'm with Graham. I think he, I think he nailed that one down. Six out of ten, I think's about right. Uh, if you would also like to have a review, uh, join us in our Discord. We announce the games we're playing uh, early On so that you can join in to the fun. And we'll re if you have post a review for us, We'll read it on live on the air. That's right. So, let's take care of a little bit of wheel action. Wheel time? It's wheel time. Tell the folks what you added this week, Mr. Brent. Uh, this week, we added the Coleco uh, Adam. Adam. Yeah. Adam. Coleco Adam. I will bring an actual Coleco Adam to this show if, the, if this thing actually spins up. Oh, you know what? We're going to... We're gonna... Retract the wheel for a moment. Gonna retract the wheel? Uh, oh, okay, I got you. Uh, <laughs> you getting tired of being crooked? Well, no. Our little logo was crooked. Being crooked is our job. <laughs> we never mentioned this, but we're available in podcast form, so feel free to podcast our show. Here we go. Survey says. Oh, that, I believe that is Dreamcast? Could it be? Is the miracle real? It is. Dreamcast. Oh, now, wow. A I system wanna, we both adore. Let me speak on this. Odelay, by the way, I <laughs> thought that was amusing last week. Um, uh, we had a hard and fast rule. And the hard and fast rule was, retro show, we're not doing anything remotely modern, right? Nah, we didn't have that rule. We're doing everyone. Yeah. And so we're doing Dreamcast now. We yes. had Xbox. you got to give Dreamcast equal time. So that should be a good... now. Well, I own several Dreamcasts. Yes. I got up in the house there, and uh, so we will we will uh, come up with something good. Now, are we going to limit ourselves to American release Dreamcasts? So we can go back to Japanese at some other point in the future. Let's do that. Uh, I think shall that's we? fair. Yeah. All right. Fair uh, enough. Now, uh, before we end the show, yeah, we've got uh, some news. To take care of. I, I have to uh, uh, thank James Curry. Uh, if you remember back in episode fifty-two when we did the Sam Coupe. Uh, we reviewed a little game called Tur uh, Blast Turbo. You reviewed it. Well, we <laughs> both reviewed it. Well, I picked it. Yeah, you picked it, right? <clears throat> uh, a game I very much enjoyed. Aaron didn't like so much. Uh, but James, the creator, actually came into our chat uh, on the uh, comments below the video and gave more information about the game, the controls, uh, secrets. The secret. Uh, secrets in the game never released until our video. He thinks he doesn't think he told anyone else. <clears throat> and uh, he also goes over the uh, uh, status of his gold chip. His gold ASIC. Yes, I had to ask. That's the first thing I asked him. So I highly recommend everyone jump over to that video again. It's episode uh, fifty-two. Uh, and read James's comments. I don't want to go over them all here because, uh, uh, you know, just to take up too much time. But thank you, Mr. James Curry, for doing that. We thought it was very awesome to hear from you and to uh, hear some of your insight on you that. Were, you were a big fan of Mr. Curry, and you actually went into in-depth into his career, as I recall. Yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit. So, I, so I'm sure that was gratifying for you no. to get that to get to him. To I, be, hey, I liked it. On board. Um, this will be the last week of the uh, uh, ARG Presents Arcade Decoration Challenge. Uh, if you have an, uh, an idea for our arcade here, uh, we've gotten several really good ones, more than I would have anticipated, to be honest with you, Brandy. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in submitting your idea, you can leave us a comment either below the video, in Discord, or please send us an email, argpresents at mail.com. We got mocked about our email address uh, the other night, but also by Bode, who mocked us incessantly. But by God, ARG presents at mail.com. It's simple. It rolls off the tongue. It does. It? And uh, to the winning selection, uh, we will re you will be re receiving an arcade fun pack. Ooh. It'll be fun. An yeah. arcade-related one of Brent. You so if you want to go over the challenge, once, since this is going to be the last week, people can uh, submit... Yeah, we are redecorating this arcade that we set in right now. Uh, it's a uh, right on the on the on the Mount Fuji side. Yeah, and so uh, we right now it's sort of like a big metal building in the brand. Yeah, with some you know, we've hung up some stuff. We've got wall decorations, but we're ready to take yeah. it to the next so level. So we are looking for suggestions. We've gotten there's a couple I'm really leaning towards actually, uh, Brenny. 
Uh, but uh, there's sway still, them, folks. There's still time. You've got to, you've got time to put out something even better. That's right. You, there's still time for you to get your suggestion in. I would love to hear more suggestions. Yes. Again, that he, and also if you ever have a comment, question, or a suggestion for pie piece, we're taking suggestions for pie piece. We've, we've got, got some bunch, great anyway. mouse only was one of the best yeah. suggestions we now, got listen, so far. Uh, and we've mentioned this before. Uh, yeah, we do retro games. We'll do pinball. We'll do just about anything. To we be will. Honest with you. So if you want us to do, we'll do it. If you want us to look over a role playing game, I mean a physical paper and pencil one, or a module for a game, a card, a collectible card game, board games, it's uh, all good. Uh, some sort of toys. I mean, we, I don't think we do. We really even care. Which do we we'll well, do? Well, I don't want. I mean, do toys. I don't want to do. It. Listen, <laughs> we'll do whatever. Listen, I'll make him do it. We'll make him do it. So send your suggestions in. I mean, what's worst we can say is like this is garbage, and we're not going to tell you that because really. Do a better job than we are most of the time. Probably. Anything else? No, let's wrap it up. So, next week, the mighty, mighty Dreamcast, Sega's Last Stand. A sad sad tale, but it was a good way to go out. Thank God they didn't go out on some of those previous uh, uh, releases. So, please join us next week for the Dreamcast. And until then, bye!